Hey guys, Mrs. Spence here. We are starting a new quarter with ratios, rates, and proportions. So this video is going to be focusing on ratios and ratio tables. Let's jump right in. Okay, so the definition for ratios are a comparison of two quantities or numbers. So we want to say fraction a lot of times with ratios, but ratio or fractions are actually a type of a ratio, two numbers that are in a relationship and we're just comparing them. So for fractions, the relationship that they have is that it is a part or a piece of a total of something. Um, for ratios, ratios can be anything. So we could be talking about the number of boys in a class or the number of seventh graders in a school. Um, so you can be talking about lots of different comparisons of things, and you'll learn next week even about rates where it's a comparison of two very different things, like miles per hour is a specific type of ratio number comparison, but they're not dealing with the same units. Miles is distance and hour is time. So. We're going to get into some specifics about that next week, but right now a ratio is just comparing two different numbers and we can write them different ways and we have different types of those ratios. So let's take a look at those. Um, three ways to write your ratios. Okay, we have the traditional way, which looks like a fraction. Okay, but how we say it is we have a number that we're comparing to another number. This fraction bar now means two, the word two. All right, you'll also see it written with a colon. So you'll have a comparison to another number, or you'll actually see it with the word two. All right, let's take a look at our first example here. It says, compare the number of happy emojis to the number of unhappy emojis. Now, in this, order matters. So if they list happy emojis first, we need to list happy emojis first in all of our comparisons. Okay, to unhappy emojis, that would be listed second. And so we're needing to put the unhappy emojis second in each of our ratios, okay? So let's go ahead and do this here. All right, let's count our happy emojis. So we have one, two, three, four. All right, we have four happy emojis, two unhappy. Let's count our unhappy emojis. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so we have six unhappy emojis. Now, just like fractions, remember fractions are a type of ratio, we are gonna wanna reduce these numbers, okay? It's smaller to work with um, and easier to work with, but if you wanted to leave the first one to see exactly how many happy ones there are to unhappy, that's always good practice, but I would say let's go ahead and create an equation equivalent ratio here that's a little more simple to handle. All right, so we know that two comes out of both of these numbers, so we're going to reduce it by two, leaving us two to three. So for every two happy, oops, let me change my colors back. For every two happy emojis, there should be three unhappy ones. Here's one, here's two, here's three. All right, there's one group. And let's see if that works over here as well. For every two happy, well, that's this guy and this guy, there should be three unhappy emojis, one, two, three, and that is true. So we definitely see that four to six can also be looked at as two to three, all right? And then you could write them all the same way, two to three or two to three. And then the different types. So part to part is when you're comparing one thing to another thing, like happy to unhappy. So that would be an example of a part to part. Happy emojis to unhappy emojis. We're looking at one thing to the next thing. Part to whole would be if we said, let's compare the number of unhappy emojis 
to the total emojis that are present there, okay? Fraction, this would be a fraction part to whole. All right, so we had six unhappy. And how many did we have all together? Well, four plus six is 10, or you could actually count them. And you have 10 total emojis. This can also be reduced by two. So you can have six to 10, or you could also have three to five. Okay. All right. Now I want to show you something about reducing or making equivalent ratios. You can also enlarge ratios to make what we call proportions. All right. So proportions are just equal ratios. They have the same value amount like we created over here. So we had the four to six, but then we also had the two to three. Okay, and you saw that visually. Just like one half, this is something very common that we use, one to two. Okay, we have one boy to two students. Um, we have one part chocolate chips to two parts peanuts, if you're making just a chocolate chip and peanut gorp or an M&M and peanut gorp, okay? One to two. Um, you can also enlarge that. All right, let's say that we're going to be making, let me use something better than GORP. Um, oh, Lucky Charms. Okay, so unfortunately, there is only one part marshmallow to two parts of those cereal pieces, right? Um, and if we wanted to get, if we're making it ourselves, and let's say we had one cup to two cups, all right? But I wanna make this for, that would give us a total of three cups to share amongst people. That's only like three people we can feed. What if we wanted to feed more people? All right, so let's double it, all right? So if we're gonna double something, we would times it by two. So we're gonna times it by two. Now, I don't wanna just multiply the top by two because then we're only enlarging the marshmallows, which we probably would want, right? But we need to keep the recipe the same. So we need to also enlarge the bottom by the same number too, all right? And we do know that two over four or two to four is the same thing as one to two, okay? We also could say, you know what, what if I want um, a total of 10 cups of marshmallows? We would know that the bottom needed to be 20 because we have to keep the proportion here of this is half the size of that, okay? Or this is twice the size of that. All right, let's take a look at my visual example and then we'll come back to that other um, number example there. All right, so this, I had chat GPT create for me. Um, I have a very large man over here with a little tiny head. And I have on the left, this cartoon of a boy that has a very big head with a little itty bitty body, all right? These guys do not look proportional, all right? they look odd, right? They don't have equal sized parts here. All right. So I had this friend um, growing up and her dad was a very large man. Now I have not seen this man as an adult. So he's probably not even as large as he is in my head because when you're little, you think everybody's really, really big, you know? So he was very big, very broad shouldered. He was a giant man, tall, and he wasn't fat, but he was definitely a large, broad man. And he had this little bitty head, okay? So we always would, unfortunately, talk about Mr. Jones's little tiny head. And poor thing, I hope he never knew that we did that. And I probably need to apologize. But it helped me when I look at this say, okay, we do not wanna blow up our ratios or our fractions only on the bottom and keep little tiny things on the top because it's not going to be proportional. For example, if we had two thirds or two to three and I want to go to 30 down here, okay, and I multiply by 10 to get to 30, but I leave the top the same and forget to multiply by 10, ooh, I just blew the bottom up really big, but I kept this top small and now it looks weird, okay? So I enlarged three all the way 10 times to 30, but I forgot to enlarge the top. So if I went back up here and said, oh yeah, let me make it proportional, it would then be 20 to 30 and that looks better, okay? Same the other way around here. If you have like Megamind, if you've seen the movie Megamind, he had a ginormous head and a normal tiny little body, okay? Then you would not want to, let's say one fifth. Okay, you're not gonna wanna blow this one up 
and forget to blow the bottom up as well, you're going to want to multiply by the same number so that you have proportional ratios, okay? You enlarge them the same, all right? So don't create our mega mind or our Mr. Jones here. You want to make sure that whatever you do to the top, you do to the bottom and vice versa. All right, so let's look at this example. So we have three to 10, and we specifically want to enlarge the bottom to 50. All right, let's get a practical example here. Let's say that we have, um, let's say three girls. Okay, volleyball. If we have three hitters in a team of 10 girls, and we want to keep that proportion, but I need to see how many hitters we would need if we had multiple teams and we had a total of 50 girls, how many hitters would we need to keep that nice equal proportion? And so if we multiply our 10 to get to 50, what did we multiply by? Five, that's right. So if we multiply the bottom by five, we need to multiply the top by five to keep it proportional so we don't create a disproportionate ratio, okay? So if we multiply by five to the bottom, we gotta multiply by five to the top and we get 15 50. So that's saying we would need 15 hitters for having teams of 50 girls if we like the proportion of three hitters to 10 girls, okay? So hopefully that helps you see that. And then we're gonna come over here and you guys have this worksheet in your packet. So go ahead and take the second to pull it out, pause if you need to. And we're gonna complete this together. So ratio tables are a nice tool to help us create equivalent ratios whenever we need to know more than just one thing, like that example we just did. We needed to go from 10 to 50, and that was just one thing we needed to do, but tables can help you see multiple equivalent ratios. So this is a common example when you're working, knowing how much you're going to earn if you work one hour versus eight hours versus fill in the blank, okay? I'm just going to go with half of eight, so four hours, and let's do random 13 hours. How much are you going to make for 13 hours? All right. In this example, we know how much we're going to make per hour. This is called a unit rate. And you're going to learn more about this next week. But we make $15 per hour. So what we would need to do to go from 1 to 15, we would times by what? 15. That's right. So to go and find out how much you're going to make for four hours, we would multiply by how much you would make per hour, which is 15, right? So for four hours times that $15 per hour, one hour, you would just multiply and you would get $60. Okay. Now to go from eight hours to find out what your paycheck's going to be after working eight hours at $15 per hour, you would do eight times 15, or if you know that four is half of eight and 60 is half of what, you could do it that way as well, or you can do the math calculation real quick, 120. And then let's see 13 hours. Now you could pick different numbers besides four and 13. I just did those two, but you need to find out though eight hours. And then if let's say you work 13 hours times $15 an hour, you'd get paid $195 for working 13 hours. Not too bad. All right. Now we can also use ratio tables to solve word problems like the second example here. So we have someone who's counting their calories. They only have 200 more calories left for the day, but they wanna eat the maximum amount of ice cream that they can without going over their 200. So what we're gonna do, and in this example, we're not given the per one cup, that nice pretty unit rate that makes it so easy to calculate. So we have to find that first and then work backwards, okay? So this one's gonna feel very backwards, but it's the same thing. And then we're gonna use our table to answer our question. All right, so we have that for five cups, it's 685 calories. So we're gonna write over here 685 calories. I'm gonna create a ratio here to five cups of ice cream. Now, it's easiest to work with that unit rate of just one cup. So that's what I'm going to set up over here, one cup. And I'm going to create my equivalent ratio getting me to one cup. And you'll learn again more about this next week. So how do we go from five to one? Well, first of all, we're not multiplying because we're going from a bigger number to a smaller number. So instead of multiplication, what do you think we're going to do? 
we're going to divide. Very good. The opposite. So how do you go from 5 to 1? You divide by 5. What you do to the bottom, we're not going to just shrink the bottom without shrinking the top as well. So go up there and shrink the top equally. And we see that 685 divided by 5, if you were to do that in your calculator or off to the side, you would get 137 calories. So I'm going to go ahead up here and put it in. So it's 137 calories per one cup of ice cream. Now we can kind of work whichever way you want to find the two cups and the half a cup. So to go from one to two, we multiply by two. So I could multiply this by two. Or if you like to set it up this way, you can. We would times by two. So we're gonna times this by two. And if you times 137 by two, you get 274. So 274 calories for two cups of ice cream. And then same thing with this. You can either set up equivalent horizontally this way, or if you know that going from here to here, you're gonna divide by two. So you, from here to here, you're gonna divide by two, keep it equal. Um, there's that setup. I'm also going to come back over here. Uh, let's um, let me erase this work here. All right, so to go from one cup to half a cup, how do you go from a larger to a smaller? You're going to divide. You cut it in half, so divide by two, or you could times by one half, either way. So 137 divided by 2 for this one is 68.5. All right, so now we've completed our table. Let's use that information to answer our word problem. So if we only have 200 more calories, can we have two cups? No. Can we have one cup? Yes, and there's room in between here, but you know what? I'm not going to be measuring out. I'm just going to eat the one cup, and I'll have some spare leftover calories for the day. All right, so I hope that these examples have helped you see how to create ratios, ratio tables, and use those to solve real-life problems as well as our word problems. Now it's your turn to practice. Good luck.